From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. One more corner pocket. Now here's Warchant.com's ass on Hunch of Andy and Corey Clark. Hey, I did your partner because she's hot as a baker because I'm naughty by nature. What is up, everybody? It is Wake Up War Champ, presented by the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. Coming up on today's show, Naughty by Nature, Derek Naughty, Kansas City Chiefs, breaking things mm. down, being in the NFL, playing with an awesome quarterback, being in his third Super Bowl. And, hey, at least it's not us. Wake Up War Champ, presented by the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill, Tallahassee, Florida. It's Tuesday. It's Taco Tuesday. This special goes all day. Buck 99 for tacos, hard, soft shell, chicken, beef, do it. Play trivia. Corner Pocket Bar and Grill, cptallybar.com. That funky looking barcode. It's called a QR code on your screen. Pull your phone out, hit it up. Takes you right to the website and check everything out. Warchant.com, Ultimate Summer Sports Source. Thumbs up, five star rating and review. And subscribe, y'all. Subscribe. Corey Clark's here, everybody. Senior writer for Warchant.com. Corey, how are you? I am doing great, buddy. I'm doing uh, fantastic. Getting ready to. Uh... Um, later on today, I'm going to be heading back to, I've been gone for like eight or nine days yeah. from Atlanta. So going to go see the kid. Right. Um, he did, if people were wondering, he did actually, we, we, it's official. He did, he did make his uh, freshman high school baseball team. Um, yep. Strong and, program, uh, strong program in the, the Mill Creek area. No, it is a very strong program. Uh, we'll see how strong the freshman team is. Uh, but their varsity team has been very good here lately and, uh, and should be good again. It's always good too. like Brady feels good about it and he should, um, because it's not easy to make these teams up in, in that area of the world yeah. necessarily. But um, there is a kid in his class that he's known since they were eight uh, that, it, that made the varsity team as a freshman. Um, and you can imagine at a place like Mill Creek, who is in the highest classification in Georgia and I think was in the state semifinals last year and is a very good baseball program, how good you must be as a freshman to make the varsity team and are probably going to play a lot. Uh, so it's always good for Brady to see that level of it too, right? Like to, to rub elbows with that and see like, okay, that's what, that's what the really, really, really good look like. So that's where I'm trying to get to. So that's cool when you, that's cool for high school in general, right? You get to high school, you think you're a big deal. And then uh, not that Brady thought he was a big deal, but there's always somebody better. And at Mill Creek or a big school like that, any of these big classification schools for all of our kids, sons and daughters that are, uh, athletes, there's always like a aspirational out there. Somebody that's like, man, I, and just so happens for Brady, it's a kid in his own class that he's friends with, but whatever. I told him, I'm like, man, you, look, I know you're not the best of friends with Will, but you've got to get in there, man. Just get in there and be his hype man, man. Just just text him, see if he needs anything. Yeah. Just you, because when he, you want to be one of his boys when he gets, uh, when, when he becomes a major leaguer. That's all I'm saying. No pressure, Will. Yeah, it's like sign to clutch so that you get on LeBron's team and then LeBron right. will take care of you, you know. Yeah. So That's awesome. Congrats to uh, Brady Clark taking the uh, the mantle from Corey. Now we got a we got a real athlete, Apex right. Alpha athlete out there at the next level. That's, that's right. awesome. Link, get yeah. on it. Go check him out. Oh, well, gonna... Link, check out Will. Uh, <laughs> Brady and I'll say right now, Brady and Will are a package deal. Will does not know that, uh, but they are a package deal. Uh, Derek not interview coming up here shortly. We got something to talk about because I did say at least it's not us, but that's really underselling or maybe overselling. I mean, we're doing great right now for Florida State. Just it's great to watch other people's uh, misery right now. But defend yourself, Corey Clark. Nadia Sarmova on YouTube. Corey, when did you switch places with Aslan as the pessimist of the two? <laughs> Knowles elite players stay healthy. We will be ACC champs in 2023. Come on, let's create what we want, not what we don't want. Mm, go Knowles. Go. Yeah, manifest it, man. A little manifest destiny. We, yeah. we talk it into existence. I, I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, again, I think it's just the last five years of kind of. Um, I, no, I shouldn't say that because I was always like this. Uh, I thought Maryland was going to be a problem in 13. Like this is just how I'm built. And again, I just blame it on growing up an Atlanta sports fan. It's in my DNA now. It's hard not to be that. Uh, it's hard not to be a, a pessimist. Uh, sometimes, but in reality, yes, if they stay healthy, that's a big if, of course, uh, if they stay healthy, there's no reason uh, th- they shouldn't beat Clemson once, if not twice, 
Uh, the important one, of course, being in Charlotte. But yeah, they're they're this is a this is a loaded team. I don't know how else to say it. It is a loaded football team. Still got to see. There's still probably a couple more tweaks to make after the spring, um, but that offense uh, should be uh, one of the five or ten best in the United States and the best in the conference. Dude. And if you know, great reporting by our own Irish show fell FSU, the only team in the country with a top ten player returning at every skill position on offense. Jordan Travis, according to what PFF? PFF. Yeah. Jordan Travis, Trey Benson, Jaheim Bell, Johnny Wilson. Y'all are fine with nine and four. Y'all are okay with that. And you got Jared Verse. You got a first round pick at defensive end. Mm. You've got two dudes, three probably really high end defensive tackles and Fabian Lovett, Braden Fisk, and Daryl Jackson. Nine yeah. wins though, it's cool. You got uh one of the best corners in the country in yeah, Cyprus. Ventral Cyprus. Yeah. Yeah. Um I don't believe you all, but it's cool though. Whatever you know, no, it's, it's not. Fine. It's fine. Again, cool is not the right word. They're they're not irate. I think is the is the right, correct. Nobody's going to be cool with nine and four. It's just you know they won't be irate like you will be. Like you're going to be calling for heads. No, I won't. No, I, no. I don't think I. I mean, he's he's done enough to to quell that. I'm so, I'm so shocked he hasn't got a contract extension. What's going on over there? How about that? I uh, take, yeah, that is I, that I'd is been, something. If my bookie had the over underline on the date, like after the cheese bowl, I'd have been like under forty eight hours. He's signing an extension. Here we are now. Maybe like, they're waiting till this like halftime of the spring game, and they're going to present him a big check, <laughs> like Happy Gilmore, like, like one of the golf. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like they do for golfers. Uh, Corey, I want to talk about this before we get to the uh, Derek Naughty interview. Shout out again to our guy for taking time out of a really busy schedule to uh, hang out. In the Corey Kansas City Chiefs, uh, what are they? They're not sports information. They're whatever they PR yeah. for the Kansas City Chiefs. Yes. Uh, very, very nice of them to hook us up. Uh, and nice of your guy, Aslan, to be petty and keep a three-year-old email. Uh, I, I will take to my grave that the only reason we got Derek on is because I replied to the email from three years ago. And I was like, hey, long time. How you doing? Nice. Because uh, Philadelphia oh. shot, shot me down right from the jump. There was just nothing. Yeah. Uh, so then next year, if exactly. the Eagles are in it again, yep. we're, we're yep. getting Josh Sweat. I'm, I'm saving it. So yeah. when the Eagles go back, we'll get Josh Sweat. And maybe Marvin Wilson will actually be in the starting rotation or in part of go. the mix on there. Uh, spoke about this on the Monday Smash with Irish Show Fell. Uh, I'm sure you guys will probably be talking about this later on today, 1 to 3 o'clock, Seminole Headlines, 93.3 FM, as well as War Chant TV, which is free and it'll be live. But the Jaden Rashada, and I guess, you know, we're not we're not Wake Up Sun Devils, we're not Wake Up Gators, but, um, you know, I guess maybe with the Florida legislature taking on NIL this week and probably going to pass something here to help staffs uh, be able to communicate better with their collectives and the players, to see these numbers, I guess maybe this is a different kind of thought, but my buddy sent me a text message in a group chat, Corey, and he's just like, Aslan, is this real? And, you know, this is from The Athletic. Shout out to them. The, the contract, apparently, that he had with Florida that fell through, Corey, $500,000 up front, so I guess some kind of signing bonus, if you want to call that. 250000 American dollars a month he would have yeah. received, a month as a freshman. That would have ticked up north of $290,000 a month as a sophomore, $375,000 a month as a junior. If he would have made it all four years, this all would have been valued at $13.85 million. If Jordan Travis's deal with, with the battle's end came out to being structured at $375,000 a month, I would. I don't want to say I'd be sick, but I'd be like, "Oh my gosh, what are we doing, America? A kid that hasn't done anything, not right. one single thing." How did you react when you saw those numbers? Yeah, kind of like that. And again, my biggest issue with all of it is that he has done nothing. Um, Jordan Travis has earned his money, um, and he's earned a lot of money for the school. This kid has done nothing for the school, nothing, and might not ever. Like, if Xavier Lee was coming out today, what would his rate be? Yeah. Number one dual threat kid in the country? 6'6", six, six, can throw it 100 yards on his back? Whatever the, the crazy, uh, you know, the crazy tales of him in, in, his, in his ability? Like, it, that's, again, that's not what NIL was des designed for. I know it's what it's become. But, I, yeah, it, it, it's absurd. And it's, you're paying a kid for what he might be, maybe, it's almost like you're paying for him his star ranking in your recruiting class. 
Like what? There's no. I mean, in, unless you think he's the next Patrick Mahomes or the next Tom Brady or whatever. Which again, quarterbacks are very important. But I just don't understand. Um, he's an Arizona State, by the way, everybody. Correct for a lot less money than that. Um, but because if he was making more than that, he'd be making more than Dillingham. Um, you can't. You know what I mean? If he was making the ro- the going rate that he wanted at Florida, what, what Florida was going to pay him, he'd he'd be making more than the head coach. How does that play in the locker room, right? How does that play when when you've got a kid that's not playing and he probably wasn't going to play as a true freshman, making a quarter of a million dollars a month? Meanwhile, it's the other guys that are sacrificing their bodies on, on Saturdays. In fact, it's the other guys that are sacrificing their bodies every day of the week while you get to wear a pretty green jersey and not get touched. Like, I just think that adds dissension into a locker room, and it is different than what happens in the NFL. I know Patrick Mahomes makes $500 million in the NFL. He's also Patrick Mahomes, number one, but they're all getting paid. They're all, Derek Nottie is having a very good life right now. I do not think Derek Nottie is upset because Patrick Mahomes is making a lot of money. But ask me about a Florida kid if their backup quarterback, their second or third string quarterback, is making two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. There's or, no sorry, way though. There's there's no way he would be the backup. Like at this point, I mean, I know Billy Napier can be like, you guys can go kick rocks. You're not making my personnel decisions. But whoever has the money to be able to pay this has to have the influence to make sure that this kid starts because you you can't pay that kind of money to not have him play, right? I mean, how, how does to your point, like how would that work? That'd be in, that'd be just. Absolutely. Well, I, honestly, I, I I don't think that will happen. I do not think that that, that these collectives will, will dictate who plays. Uh, I really don't. I don't think Nap- – I mean, Napier's got a job to worry I know, about. But if, if, this- if I'm giving you $5 million to get Jaden Rashad and you don't start him, I'm never giving you any more money unless you win the national title with him being your backup quarterback. Well, I think you're, the- you're, Graham Mertz is the – I'm like, all right, I screwed up, bad investment. But, man, if they if they piddle away to 8-4, and 7-5, and five, and you had this kid on the bench, I don't care what you saw at practice. I've, I'm, I'm putting my mind, I'm putting myself in the shoes of someone who's really rich and has been really successful, and everything they say has been right, and everyone listens to them. You're not going to do what I said. I, I'm, I'm not cutting you any more checks. Then what happens? Yeah, I mean, then he's going to go to Arizona State. But I, I, you know, I think that's that's the that's the bottom line. But I don't think that if somebody was paying, uh, like if Brock Glenn had a deal like this. And again, a completely oh. different circumstance. Oh, God. But I mean, Shit. you're not going to play Brock Glenn. <laughs> and let's say it's next year, not this year, because we all know Jordan's the guy this year. But next year, you're not going to just dictate. Mike Norvell can't. Uh, it doesn't matter what the kid's getting paid. That's not Norvell's problem. It's not his money. Sorry, man, you blew money. I really appreciate the the love for you have for our program, but don't you think I have the best interest of our program at heart too? This kid's not ready. He doesn't give us the best chance to win. In fact, he might embarrass us, embarrass himself, and lose so much confidence that your money will never be used. Like let let's see what happens when he's competing for the job after his retro, after his freshman year. I I think, but what's crazy about the but I mean you know who knows, man. I I, I don't think this is the norm. It shouldn't no, be painted right, as the norm. Right, right. This is ridiculous. It's a, it, it, it's it, it's really going to be interesting though because these numbers became public, mm. and these these collectives and these schools have done a pretty and the players themselves have done a pretty nice job, pretty commendable job of keeping everything kind of hush hush to themselves about what the dollar figures actually are. They haven't been publicized. Well, this got publicized with an actual contract, mm. so it'll be interesting to see how these collectives move forward with the next. Uh, Arch Manning, the next five-star super-duper quarterback. What's he going to ask for? What's he going to think he's worth? Um, that, that'll be interesting. But also, I like that the contract basically is just, what's it worth? It, it's just voided. Yeah. It was nothing. It, what's the point of having a contract? It's like a, it's like a handshake agreement. It, it didn't mean anything. Now, by the way, we and, don't have that money. Sorry. Oops. Yeah. And, it, and it also, I like that it was like per year. So if you do leave, you're not getting any money, you know, as a as a junior. If you're in somebody else's program, yeah, uh, or if you're if you're hurt, or if you don't play football anymore, we don't owe you this money. It's a per year, uh, kind of like scholarships used to be or still are, I guess. Like the the one like year per renewables. month. It's per month. So like if you transfer, like you lo- you're not getting yeah. all your money for the year. It's per month. So yeah. Yeah, and why would he transfer if he's getting a quarter of a million dollars a month? I mean, are you? That's again. That's what just you- not. And who is this kid? Is he I'm, is he is he incredible? Yeah, I think he's a consensus four star. I mean, I don't. I hate to be. He's not even a five star, but he's not even a five star. You know, like yeah. 
What do you do if you're Graham Mertz? And I don't know when they, I don't know if their their schedules come out, but like if you're if you're like five and zero going into the Tennessee game, price of business goes you, up. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're his daddy, like hey guys, yeah. you're gonna give Rashad all this money. My guys got you. My kids got you five and zero going to the Tennessee game. Like I want this. Well, there is now. Look, I I I really pray and hope, and I'm not trying to manifest this and speak it into existence. What if you're Graham Mertz? So if you don't know, guys, is the Wisconsin transfer that's probably in line to be the the starting quarterback at Florida State. But um, if he is 5-0, and do you renegotiate going into the Tennessee game? Yeah. And like, hey, do y'all want me to play in the Tennessee game? Because price of business has gone up. And this $7,000 a month that I'm making, no, no, no. I'm going to pull, like these players do it, like I'm going to pull a Kyrie. Right. I, I'm not going to play calf until sore. I get what I want. I have a calf sore right now. Calf yeah, I, I, I want, I, yeah, exactly. I, I need a little load management. I don't know if I can play this week. Uh, I'm not. I'm not besmirching Graham Mertz. I don't think he's like this, but that will be a thing, right? If a kid outplays his NIL yeah. and becomes much better than what they thought he was going to be, well, then maybe he starts making demands in the middle of a season before a big game. I mean, what if like Jameis, like after the Clemson game in 13? I mean, I I, I chip in. I would chip in. I'm like, all right, what do yeah. we got to do to keep him playing? Here's the after money. the Clemson game, are you crazy? After the <laughs> beat, after the Bethune Cook, after the Pitt first quarter, <laughs> you're like whatever you want, man. Whatever you want, a golf course. Do you want a blimp? Whatever you want, man. We will get it to you. Uh, yeah, no, uh, absolutely. So, but also you got to make contracts stronger, and that's you know, these are contracts. These are financial contracts, and um, you know we all know about Amarius Mims and and other people that have said they're going somewhere and then not. You know the, these contracts, I think, will be much more. We'll get into a space where they're, uh, you know, much more not bulletproof. What's the word I'm looking for? But maybe bulletproof Iron is the word. Ironclad. Iron Ironclad. Come on, there you go, guys. There's the compound word I was Ooh. looking for. Ironclad, where um, you can't do what I was just saying. You you would do. You can't say I'm going to sit out. And I mean, I guess you always could, like these guys doing. Um, uh, they, they used to do it. They don't do it as much anymore. But in the NFL, there'd always be a guy sitting out in August of training camp until he got his contract renegotiated. You know, I, I think that could happen. But if you make the contract the right way, it, it probably wouldn't. But who knows, man? It's it's the it's brand new world. Brand new world we're living in. Vitamin Energy is on a mission to make the world healthier and more productive by providing convenient access to vitamins energy for people on the go. It's not even two ounces. It gets you going for seven or more hours of your day. Vitamin Energy is made in the United States with globally sourced ingredients, including all natural caffeine. That's what gives you the boost, carries you through the day. It is non-GMO, no sugar added, kosher approved. Vitamin Energy is energy with benefits. This stuff will get your day going in the right direction. VitaminEnergy.com. Use the promo code WarchampBogo, B-O-G-O. Energy levels boosted. Antioxidant support, immune system support, even helps with weight management. Again, VitaminEnergy.com, promo code WarchampBogo, B-O-G-O. You will get an item of equal or lesser value for absolutely free. Still working on the vitamin D, Corey. The little sour apple action. And again, right what I needed. Right what I needed when I needed it. I think I'm going to go to the focus here in a day or two or the mood boost. I don't know if I, I don't deserve to have a better mood. I'm just going to be who I am. But I'm interested. I'm I haven't focus. done the mood booster yet. And uh, now that I'm going to be with Brady for a, next week, week and a half, I, that's probably a really good idea. It's going to be a lot of mood boosting to see if I'm a, a better dad and, well, a more patient dad than I usually am with my teenage son. All natural caffeine gives you your boost. Vitaminenergy.com. Promo code WARCHANT, B O G O. Derek Nottie coming up right after this. What is up, everybody? Welcome on back to Wake Up War Chant. This is also a standalone video. Corey Clark and myself joined by Derek Nottie, Florida State alum, Kansas City Chief. will be uh, playing in his third Super Bowl this next Sunday here. Uh, Derek, thanks so much for joining us, man. How are you? I'm fantastic, man. I'm glad to be here. Awesome. So, Derek, you've accomplished so much in your, your short career here, man. You're 26 years old, and you've been in the league for five years. Again, your third Super Bowl. Uh, but, you know, I check out your Twitter, man, and all of the great things that you've accomplished that you could kind of like showcase uh, and the image that you have uh, pinned to your Twitter or your Twitter, rather, uh, is a photo of you in a Florida State jersey, man. Uh, what did your time in Tallahassee mean to you? And uh, just how much do you miss playing college football? Man, shoot, being in Tallahassee with the people that I've been around, it kind of made me who I am today from my, from my D-line coach to a lot of my teammates. I was still close friends with. 
Uh, like I said, it transformed me into the man I am today. I learned a lot of lessons, a lot of hard lessons. Um, I would always, any chance I would have, I would love to go back and redo it all over again. What is, uh, we hear so much about Odell. Um, everybody that played for him uh, has so much to say about uh, o Odell Hagens and just the kind of person he is, what kind of coach he is, because he's not your friend when he's out there on the football field with you. What did you learn from him? How how much of a stark realization that this, my life is different with this guy coaching me when you were a freshman in college, did you, did you get like, Oh man, this is going to be different. This guy's different. He's going to stay on me for three or four years. Oh man. Oh my gosh. Odell, coach Odell. See, one thing about him, he always made sure you stayed focused on the little things. It was always the little things with him. Uh, funny story, rookie year and I mean, freshman year, and I'm going, I'm going through it with uh, Coach Odell. It's, it's not fun, not at all. Uh, they got, because it, it was always either he was gonna yell at you even if you were wrong or whether he was right. If you was right, he's gonna yell at you even harder. He might do, make you do the drill like two more times, just to make sure it stays with you. Like it was so bad. I would be in training camp, and I'm having nightmares of him just yelling at me. And I wake up in the middle of the night, just like, "Yo, is he here?" I swear, he was wrong. Like, <laughs> It's, but he go he's gonna be on you hard because he always he cares about his players he cares about his uh, players in the D line room or on the team overall he really loves the people he's around and he makes sure he hold he, everyone's being held accountable so I tip my hat off to him because without him I went from football wise I wouldn't be where I am today life wise I wouldn't be where I am today. It's crazy, too. You think about, like, Timmy Jernigan, Fabian Lovett, who's still on the team now, guys that were your class, guys that came 10 years before you. You all have this – you're all, like, in this same fraternity that y'all were coached by Odell. Like, the wide receivers, the quarterbacks, they were all your teammates, and I'm sure you love them and you, you have fun with them. But they don't know what you guys know about football practice because they weren't coached by Odell. How cool is that when you see any defensive tackle in the league or you see any Florida State defensive tackle from yesteryear to be able to relate to them because y'all all went through the same thing. Man, it's so cool because I remember uh, I want to say <clears throat> after one of my good friends, the Marcus Christmas, after his first year in the league, we just kind of just were kicking it in the offseason and we were just talking about, I'm like, man, everything that Coach Odell really tells about this league is absolutely right. Uh, and we just started laughing because he would all, every other day, or every any other week, we'll be in the meeting room, and he'll he'll stop. Um, we'll be watching film. He'll stop, and like he'll be like a, a quick minute, minute thirty minutes or whatnot. It's like, yeah, let's talk about life real quick, and we'll go just go into detail about things and just life and things in the league, things we prepare, be prepared for, what to what's gonna happen, what to expect, and and in that time, I'm gonna just shake my head, like, man, what is what is this man talking about? Like, Okay, I get it. You want best us to be prepared for whatever, but you, I feel like it's kind of a reach. But the very second I get in the league, I just observe everything. I'm like, wow, he was absolutely right, man. So it's just it's 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 great to have a teacher to prepare you for everything on this next level. Derek, when you enrolled at Florida State, you had a, a real good quarterback at the helm, uh, and now that you're in the NFL, that you uh, you were able to have Patrick Mahomes uh, run the offense. Uh, for you as a, de a defensive player. Uh, you know, Florida State's quarterback now, Jordan Travis, has a little bit of magic in him, much like Patrick when it comes to escapability. I know you guys are always worried about getting off the field three and out, but what does it do for you as a defense when you know you have a guy like that playing quarterback? What does it do for you as a freshman to know that you guys had Jameis? Uh, what has it done for you being in the NFL knowing that you have a guy like Patrick Mahomes uh, helping the cause? Well, my freshman year, when I was still just learning anything, it was um... – it was definitely a big benefit to having a quarterback like James Winston to rely on on the offensive side, knowing that uh, on, when we're on defense and we get a quick three and out, we know in our minds, boom, he's no, I know he's going to score immediately the second against the ball. So it gives us a lot of motivation to really just keep punching at it, keep punching at it, and allow the offense to do what they got to do. And coming into uh, to going to the NFL, having a quarterback like Patrick Mahomes, it's really the same thing. It's like the same formula. You got to go in. Knowing who's on you, who's who's on your team, who's on the office on the offensive side, and you know, okay, when when they get on the field, they're gonna score. We gotta put them in the best situation to allow them to do do their thing. So we're fighting even harder just to allow them to produce. 
when you so when you joined the league, obviously uh, Mahomes had been there for a year. Um, I can't remember. Did he play as a rookie at all, or did he not? He didn't, did he? he so Bobby. his first year was your first year. Did you know, like in practice in August, um, like man, this guy because Jameis was already a Heisman winner when you joined the f- program. Mahomes hadn't really done much of anything. Did you know, like in August, like wow, this guy, this guy isn't normal. This isn't normal what I'm seeing. I have a story for you. So <clears throat> I always think about this too. So it was my, it was my, like I said, it was my my freshman my rookie year, and you know, as everybody who plays on the defensive side, there's a bubble around the quarterback, and you don't get into that bubble. Right. So I'm I'm chasing the quarterback on because I I was a uh, it was some little. T game. I was. I'm in contain. I'm chasing them down, and I'm at a certain point where I'm like, okay, slow down. But you can have your hands up, and the whole time I got my hands up, and I'm slowly like getting my hands down. So like, I I did everything, let him throw. Up. He does his signature side on throw between my arms, straight to Kelsey, and I look back. I'm like, what in the? Heck? I'm looking at my coach like, nah, you gotta run the ball. I'm like, did y'all not see that throw? <laughs> like, I'm looking. I go, I go back to my room and look at the play. I'm like, yep, that's my arm. There's the ball. I'm like, this man really thread the needle elegantly. I'm like, yo, this is an amazing kid. This is an amazing football player. Goodness gracious. <laughs> and it wasn't just like a one one trick thing in practice. Like he does it in games. You you saw immediately that this guy that this guy was different. And I just overall. How cool is it, man, that, you know, you, I know your last year at Florida State didn't go well, but b- before that, you guys won a ton, and then you go to the NFL, and you're winning every year lots of games. That must be just the coolest thing because it's hard to practice every day. It's not an easy sport, and it certainly beats losing. Yeah, it definitely is. I mean, it just goes to the – it goes to the foundation of this organization – it goes to the what the like yeah the foundation of what we build on what our standards are, and we gotta go by by those standards. So every time we go on this field, go into the building, we got work to do. So we come here, we go to work, and we show the fruits of our labor, our fruits of our labor on the field, and show what we've been doing on, on practice from Tuesday to Friday. So it just all goes back to how much we love this sport. Honestly, will will you be nervous on Sunday? Do you get nervous? I mean, it also it's also your third Super Bowl, but I assume there's still always going to be a little nerves before a game this big, right? Or is it just old hat to you now because you're in them every year? Um, I mean, when I first went, the first time I went to the Super Bowl, this is a long answer from it. So, like, the first, I've always told myself, and going through college, um, being trained for these type of um, situations, that like you got treated like any other game, focus on focus on what you what you got focus on, like uh, the great. Uh, what was his name? I forgot his name. But the quote is, be where your feet are, keep the main thing the main thing. So okay. when that in my mind, going to the Super Bowl, like I did my first time and the second time, I just stayed locked in on what I had to do, treat it as any other game. But, of course, there are higher stakes, but you still just got to stay focused on, on your targets, focus on what you got to focus on. Derek, have you been able to uh, talk to Josh Kando about uh, you know his time in Florida State and how much more exciting has it been this past year? Were you able to follow along at all and at least walk into the the, the complex a few times this year and feel really good about uh, where this program's at right now? With Kando, yeah. man, shoot, I've been talking to him since he got drafted here. <laughs> shoot, my locker's right next to him. That's my dude, and we all like especially with, with things with Florida State, we all be talking about everything that's going on. From every single week, like okay, we see uh, us doing well against LSU. I'm like, yo, we finna. This this is the year for real. I'm telling you, this is the year. And as you can see, they did their thing. I'm so proud of them because that. Oh my goodness! Like when I saw the LSU game, I was like, you know what? This could be a good year. We're gonna we're have a winning season. We're going to the bowl game. I'll take my word to the bank. I promise you. And they just kept producing week after week after week. Even if it was a lose, even if they lost the game, it was a close game. That's all I'm like, we, we, this, we're going somewhere. We're still going up the hill. Well, how they say is the climb. So I was like, you know, this is gonna be a great year for him. Do you have any relationship with Coach Norvell? Have you have you been back to Tallahassee since he's been the head coach here? No, I have not yet. Um, because how our off season is right. It's, it's so it's it's a short window. So a lot of times the second our offseason is over, I'm going – I might stop doing – I might make take a little break for maybe two weeks, and I'm going to practice training. 
Oh, and I was going to ask you that. So you 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 played a a seventeen week season. Uh, you're about to play a third playoff game. So this is twenty games plus exhibition plus August. What what do you? How do you let your body get a break? Like what do you allow yourself to be like? All right, I'm. Is it? You said two weeks. Can it be a month? Can it be six weeks? When do you go back and start lifting again and start training your body again? After two weeks. Because uh, I know our window is so short, and like by the time we're done after the Super Bowl, OTAs is coming, back, coming up really fast. So I got to be reasonable and just be like, okay, give yourself two weeks of just not doing a single thing. Just sit on the couch. You can play video games. You can do – at the most, I'll be like, okay, I can do some yoga, low-maintenance things. But not just just to get more stretch and recovery, and then after two weeks, I go right back into it. So not a trip to Cabo or anything, man. You're not going to. You're not taking a vacation. I'll be honest with you. I took my first vacation last year. Where'd you go? And was it we, fun? Ah, uh, we was in Jamaica for six days, man. It was amazing. Nice, nice. That's fun. Are you gonna try to swap jersey with Josh after the game, Derek? Josh Sweat with the Eagles. I mean, if, he, if he wants to, that's true. I, I mean, how the games normally are. Some people will be a little upset. Some people will be still be um, up spirited. Uh, it really depends how he feels. How much does it would it mean, man, to get a second one? I mean, look, you you're in rare company. You pl- you play in the NFL. Number one, there's only one percent of the football players do that, or less than that. You've also already won a Super Bowl, but a guy that's won two Super Bowls, well, there aren't many of you guys around. How how exciting is this prospect and this opportunity, man, to go back there and get you and get you another one? Oh my god, it's amazing. Uh, as much as I want to just always be thinking about it, I can't think about it. You know, I want to be more focused on what I have to do and not worry about the end result. What's at the end of the tunnel? I gotta go through the process of getting to the end of the tunnel, so I stay focused on my on my on the prize. You know. Like I always say, heart and heart and eyes on the prize. We say focus on our targets, so we focus on what we have to do. We'll get to the end of the tunnel. So I don't even want to worry about that right now. I wanted to ask you one thing real quick, and this might be my last question, but that that State Farm commercial where Andy reads on the plane, uh, I, they play it way too much now, so it's not we don't care for it anymore, like necessarily. But he's a really good actor in that when he throws the. Have you taught? I mean, is he the kind of coach that you can go up there and joke with him about something like that? Do y'all even bring it up as a team? Because I thought he nailed it. I thought he was better than Mahomes and the Jake from State Farm guy in the commercial. Um, yeah, honestly, Coach Reed's a really cool dude. I, you know, being on the defensive side, I don't really have that many conversations with him. Right. Do. He's really cool. I feel like on the offensive side, they would joke around with that. Yeah. Uh, personally, but I wish I could tell you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Derek, I'm going to ask you some rapid fire questions, but real quick, uh, just, you know, naughty dogs. Can you talk about this whole thing here? You know, I think you started back in 19. Every single uh, time you guys won a game, you would, you know, cover fees for adoptions for dogs. And I guess after the Super Bowl, you kind of covered everything for a shelter. I mean, how important uh, is it for you to to help out these uh, these foster dogs and kind of give back in that way? I mean, I'll, I'm always been a dog lover uh, since I was a kid. Even though we couldn't have pets in the house, but I always knew like when my friends had pets, I'll always help out and like. Just Ray help raise it, teach the tricks, or I just I'll take for a walk. She's like, man, let me take it. I'll take it for like 20 minutes. You'll come back and be tired and happy. But uh, for the you know the KC for uh, adoption dogs, I always had a little just a little love for animals, especially uh, when I got had my first dog, uh, Rocky. His personality is very timid. He came from just a, a bad breeder, and it just made me it's made me help me sympathize for a lot of animals uh, that don't have didn't come from his situation because I'm like he came from he came from a breeder I'm like man that's really how is that he came from a breeder and he's feeling just as bad or even maybe less as bad for a lot of uh dogs in the shelter so I'm like I want to help out a lot of these animals because my dog my dog's going bad feeling bad like he's t- he was timid he at one point it was it was sad but it was adorable like when I was back, back in Tallahassee Stan mm-hmm. Shaman saw walking down the little gravel lot. I'm walking with him. I get to the bottom. He's still at the top of the ramp. I'm like, yo, what you doing? He just looked at me and crying. I'm like, what's going on? He turns around and run. I'm like, well, hold up. You can't run the street. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It was, he he was he, so he's he's not in a day. Thank the Lord, man. But it just made me just really think about a lot of dogs that are in a, uh, a lot of shelters. 
I just wanted to help. That's uh, a lot of things. What I do, I just I just be wanting to help, just just to help. You know, it just kind of goes back to my debt. My father saying about you know nineties, we don't receive, we give. So a lot of times, I don't even think about. It. I'm like, oh, they need some help. Bet I got you, and keep it moving. You know? Nice, nice. All right, we went into overtime here, so we're gonna make this really quick, Derek. It's gonna be speed round here. Uh, we should be done in a minute if we do this right here. Got to be honest, though. Please be honest with us here, Derek. First question, did you know when you got drafted that Kansas City was actually in the state of Missouri? No, I did not. There was two of them. I did not know there was two. That's crazy. <laughs> That's fair, man. I, I'm with you. Oh, uh, Where is your Super Bowl ring right now? I will not say, but it's somewhere protected. Okay, very good. <laughs> That's smart. What's the best bowl gift you got when you played at Florida State? Oh, I had a long, I had a, a recliner. You could charge your phone in, and it had a little cup holder. I loved it. You got a recliner from a bowl? Yeah. Wow. I, I, it was. It was. I had. It took four points. I had. I had eight. I was like, let me get that. Let me get the speaker with the subwoofer, and I'm good. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Scale of one to ten, Derek. How good is Kansas City barbecue? Ten. Last I question. Game, I love Q Q39. Okay. okay. Last question. You have to be honest here, Derek. Where is more loud? Dope Campbell Stadium when the war chant's going or Arrowhead Stadium when the war chant's going? Mm. Arrowhead, because sometimes I can't hear what my teammates are saying. Yeah, uh, I, hey. I know y'all going to kill me for it. <laughs> Look, I will say, over there in Tallahassee, it is jumping. A college atmosphere is absolutely loud. But when I was in college, I could still communicate with my teammates. Right. Up here, is ridiculously loud. Like, I, I'm looking right next – like. She's right next to me. If we're on the field, I cannot hear her. <laughs> right, right. All right, All right. So, hey, we appreciate the honesty, man. Hopefully one day we're getting Doke back to uh, where it can be that loud. Uh, but, yeah, they're good again. Finally, Florida State is good again. And apparently you're always going to be good. You're always going to be playing for a winner in the NFL. Derek, thank you so much for taking time out, man. Derek Noddy, Kansas City Chiefs, playing in Super Bowl 58, Sunday, February 12th, 630. Good luck, man. Time out of a really crazy week, man. We appreciate it. Good thank luck, you. buddy. Good luck, Derek. Bye. Thank you. The big game is Sunday. I don't know if I can actually say it's the Super Bowl. There's some weird rule. Even in television, I wasn't allowed to say it. But anyhow, the big game is this weekend. Go to mybookie.ag to take advantage of all the great props and all the great odds out there for you. And use the promo code WARCHANT. Your odds will be even stacked in your favor because you'll have more purchasing power. Because when you use the promo code WARCHANT, you'll get an instant cash deposit bonus. And all you got to do is bet your amount once. And then you can pull it out. Enjoy your winnings. That's how it works. I'm not making any of this up, everybody. MyBookie.ag. Promo code WARCHANT. One of the props. This is called their Super Bowl exotic prop. White boy pass attempt. Their words, not mine. Minus 300, there is not a single pass in this game attempted by a Caucasian. Okay? Plus 200, yes, there's a pass attempt by a Caucasian. Again, this is the first Super Bowl where both starting quarterbacks are African American. Uh, pretty cool. So, unless you think Chad Henney's going to come in again, because maybe. Mahomes' ankle doesn't hold up, or maybe they do some sort of flippity do to Travis Kelsey to throw the ball. Have fun with it. Whatever you want, folks. If that's out there, imagine what else is out there that we're not even telling you about. Check it out at mybookie.ag. Use the promo code WARCHANT to get that cash deposit bonus. Again, thank you so much to Derek for taking time out of a really super busy schedule and the folks over at the Kansas City Chiefs for helping coordinate that. Um, it's awesome. Best of luck to him. I'm going to be rooting for the Chiefs now. If they would let us talk to Josh Sweat, I would have had like an Ann Bowden house divided split jersey, but they didn't. So we're going to root for the Chiefs because that's how petty I am. We're not done for the week, everybody. We'll have a thread posted later today, maybe late Tuesday night, early Wednesday morning. Renegade Express. We're expecting you folks to have a lot of interest in that. We'll break it up into two shows. So we'll have a Thursday and a Friday show for you. We'll take tomorrow off if you don't mind. Unless something breaks, then we'll come and do a show if needed. Because we're around. That's what we'll do. It's our jobs. We being myself and Corey Clark. It's been Wake Up War Champ, presented by the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill.